Hello, this is Michael Brown with Avalon Risk Management, your premier provider of insurance and surety solutions for the transportation industry. Welcome to Avalon's video series on MAP21 and other domestic transportation issues facing your industry. Each episode will cover an informational topic related to this general theme. I hope that you find them informative. Today's topic is the registration requirements for brokers, as well as the consequences under the law for operating as a broker without the proper registration and bond. MAP 21, or the Moving Ahead for Progress in the 21st Century Act, was passed by the United States Congress and signed into law by the President on July 6, 2012. The bill is over 580 pages long and includes funding for surface transportation programs at over $105 billion for fiscal years 2013 and 2014, which ends September 30th of that year. MAP 21 is the first long-term highway authorization bill enacted since 2005. In addition to providing transportation funding, MAP 21 also addresses issues like bridge and tunnel inspections, bicycle use, building ferry boats, highway tolling, bus safety, and many more. For the domestic freight industry, MAP 21 adds enforcement mechanisms around the registration requirements for domestic transportation intermediaries and makes significant changes regarding the financial responsibility requirements that apply to those entities. MAP 21 was effective in October 2012, but some provisions like the changes in the financial responsibility requirements for intermediaries were designed to automatically implement on October 1, 2013. Other aspects of the law will require the DOT and its subordinate administrations, like the FMCSA, engage in a formal rulemaking process with the requisite federal register notices. I would like to tell you about the need for brokers to have authority and the specific penalties that MAP 21 imposes on those who are not in compliance. A broker is a person or an entity that, for compensation, arranges or offers to arrange for the transportation of property by a motor carrier. A broker does not transport the property and does not assume responsibility for the property. They are, if you will, a travel agent for domestic freight. Brokers are often referred to as transportation brokers, freight brokers, or property brokers. MAP 21 does not change the fundamental definition of a broker, but it does attempt to clarify exactly who does and does not need to obtain broker authority from the FMCSA. I use the words attempt to clarify because unfortunately the language in MAP 21 on the topic of who is exempted from the requirement to obtain a broker license is somewhat ambiguous. More on that in a later episode. MAP 21 also imposes a registration renewal requirement and mandates that each broker employ as an officer an individual with at least three years of experience or who can demonstrate to the secretary knowledge of rules, regulations, and industry practices. FMCSA is required to promulgate rules surrounding these requirements. One of the biggest changes that MAP21 creates regarding the need to be licensed as a broker is the enforcement mechanism contained in the law for those who act as a broker without first obtaining the necessary authority from FMCSA. The reality is that thousands of companies have for years acted as brokers without having obtained the actual federal license to do so. MAP 21 creates civil penalties in the amount of $10,000 per violation payable to the U.S. government for acting without a license. In addition to being liable to the government for these penalties, those operating in violation of the law's licensing requirements are liable to the injured party for all valid claims incurred without regard to amount. The law doesn't stop here. In addition to imposing liability on the violating company for federal penalties and claims by injured parties, MAP 21 also makes the officers, directors, and principals of these companies liable as individuals to pay these amounts. These are significant liabilities and those who fall within the requirement to be licensed need to obtain authority immediately. So does this mean that every customs broker or ocean transportation intermediary that ever arranges for compensation for the transportation of property by motor carrier must become licensed? The answer is not exactly. There were exceptions in place previously, and MAP 21 adds several more. We will cover these in our next episode. Thanks for watching.